Hello and welcome to part six of the Bram Stoker's Restore. So originally I had this all set up with many uh, additional parts, but I've decided to condense the video sets for you guys just to speed things up a bit. Um, so in this part of the, the video here, I'm just finalizing up the cleanup of the cab. Basically, I, I finally decided to take out the metal plating and the back box with a view to basically at that point um, recondition the inside of the back box as well as the outside. Uh, so originally I was kind of toying with the idea of leaving it original and a lot of people seem to like leave the, the paintwork underneath the plate um, untouched uh, just to keep it's kind of like I suppose it's originality but I don't really understand that personally. I, uh, for me it's just like you know have a full coat rather than skimping out. The only reason they didn't do it let's face it is probably to just save on, on paint jobs that didn't need to be done and the fact I know it's there just feels like it needs to be done. Um, so yeah, at this point, it's just really taking out all the parts um, of the interior, prepping it for uh, what would have been tomorrow's visit um, to Mark, which is basically a guy known as Jagman on the forums. Um, so he kindly offered to assist. Um, I say assist, it's more like he, he offered to carry out the work for me to rebuild the, uh, the cabinet. And that I couldn't do without him. Those shots I did there was effectively me doing um, interior prep work and, and wood filling. That's the most I could possibly ever do myself. Um, in fact, also recommend you don't use um, aerosol sprays inside a room. Uh, take the cabinet outside, otherwise you'll quickly find like I did that the stuff just gets everywhere. Um, thankfully, I had like, you know, it's just cheap laminate flooring in that room and it just came off. It just took a bit of um, arm work to remove the sort of plasticide, I think they call it, um, from the floor. But yeah, wife wasn't too pleased with that. Um, so yeah, here we are anyway at, at Mark's um, business unit. Um, this was actually the day of the storm. If um, some of you may have known back in the UK, in the UK that is, um, we had a quite a severe storm, um, and it was pelting his door. Like you can see the change shaking back and forth there. That's not like how can I put it just tremors and movements that like they actually shake quite viciously at one point because it's the doors lifting up from the, the the gale force winds we were having I think it was like I don't even remember now it was it was high gale force winds I remember to the point where the the roads were closed after we'd left um so thankfully we left early in the morning otherwise we'd have been really out of luck uh, so anyway, uh, the work you can see Mark doing here is that he asked me whether or not I wanted to countersunk the cabinet. I had no idea what that meant until he started explaining it to me. But the idea is that you, you take the carriage bolts and you drill into the cabinet to ensure that basically the bolts themselves then don't protrude out on the outside when you apply the vinyl work. So effectively, it just creates a cleaner finish. There obviously isn't always a risk, I suppose, that you know if you ever want to change the bolts out, you've, you've got to effectively lift them out of the woodwork. But we put fresh carriage bolts in. Uh, I didn't use the original ones. And we followed through uh, the same with the back box. So with the back box here, I, he didn't, I didn't realize at the time, but he just wanted all the plate work out. Um, so we went ahead and disassembled the interior just so that we could finish the paint job on that one. And you know, credit to Mark, he, he knows his stuff. Um, he, he basically um, sorted out not just the, the decals on that particular piece, but the edging and everything. And I learned quite a few things from him. When, so at the moment I'm doing like a Creatures of the Black Lagoon um, restoration, let's call it. And I've, I've used some of the knowledge he was giving to me um, on this day to rebuild a lot of the back box. So cheers, Mark, for that. Um, at this point, again, as I say, he's just doing the countersunk treatment again on all the bolts. And I, I heartily recommend it to anybody who's planning to do um, vinyl decals on their machines. It, it just creates a, a much neater finish. I get it if you've got an original um, vinyl artwork, and sorry, vinyl artwork, original screened artwork, um, then you might be wanting to do something like a, a paint restoration, which is what we're doing at the moment on Creature. Um, I may or may not do a, a video for Creature, if I'm honest with you, just because it, it's it's quite a lengthy process. And unfortunately, with my camera, <laughs> it has a tendency to stop recording after 15 minutes. So you, you'll see sometimes there's always a bit of a pause here and things going black and being restarted or things jumping a little bit because I had to keep going back to the camera to reset it. Um, this process has been sped up a lot 
Um, but I had it sped up the first time round, and now rewatching it and going through all the parts again, I felt, okay, let's speed it up again so you guys don't have to listen to me waffle on for ages and ages about what I've done and where I've got to on the machine. So, yeah, the back box um, did the same thing there, as I said, counter sunk treatment. And then basically at this point, Mark is using his belt sander. And again, I don't have one, so I'm glad that he had that. Um, and he has a really nice orbital sander. I've used one of those before. Um, not of that grade or caliber. Um, I had done something similar for my um, garage conversion and it was just a cheap Makita handheld uh, orbital sander. But you definitely need to get like a belt sander and an orbital sander if you ask me, if you want to do a really nice finish on your artwork. Because I've seen so many machines where I've um, seen people effectively just put artwork on top of the original and then you get like uh, what I can only call bubbling or imperfections in, in the in the vinyl art, it will show anything like that. You really do need to make sure it's a smooth surface. So do what like Mark's doing here. Sand everything down, wood fill it, sand it again, and get it to a point where effectively it feels hand smooth. And that was the, the term he used for me. He goes, you know, nothing um, effectively prepares you better for knowing that the surface is smooth by the, the touch of your fingers basically it's you can use like you know sandpaper and uh what can i call it like you know a cloth until you're blue in the face to feel for things but y your fingers are effectively your best tools here to ensure that you've got a smooth finish and again here he's repeating the process um and you know a lot of people might be crying right now going to ask the original artwork it's been pulled off but as i mentioned in um previous videos it was it was just knackered um the the dracula artwork was was sharpied in uh with with a red pen uh because someone had left it in the sun to fade and it just looked awful so i was really keen to get rid of it and um in hindsight when, when you guys do finally see and i know some of you saw some sneak peeks by mistake when i had a machine up for sale recently and forgot to see that it was in the view um but you know when you guys do see the finished product i do hope you appreciate um that it's not just a, a slap just job here mark did a, a stellar job rebuilding the whole machine and i couldn't have done it without him so at this point we're just sanding it down again across all edges um, preparing everything. I had actually left the um, LEDs, which is like the, as you can see there on the bottom there, the, the it's just effectively a mod from Coin Cointaker that does like mood lighting, let's call it expression lighting. I probably should have removed those, but in all fairness, at the time I forgot they were there. Um, but thankfully Mark noticed them and he was, he was very careful not to knock them. And at this point, effectively, it's just more of the same, uh, just more sanding, prepping, cleaning, sanding, prepping. It, it takes a couple of hours and it's, it's worth doing it. Um, as I say, you really don't want to rush this work. I, I had tried to source a, a new cabinet for this project, but they are really difficult to get a hold of in the UK. Um, there does appear to be one company I've managed to track down that actually does want to do them. Um, but I haven't actually approached them to do the work yet. I'm, I've thankfully been in a position where I can restore them rather than replace them at this point. And here we're just doing some uh, priming. So to give you guys a bit of a, uh, a tip here as well is that what you should always try and do is uh, when you've got the edging on all of your machines and you've sort of like sanded down the artwork and that, just go f over with the um, with a spray can. This is a, a black spray can, the edging, because then that way anything where you're effectively applying the, the vinyl decals and you're cutting it back away from the edge, you haven't got the previous artwork showing through. Because even though we're sanding and, and effectively cleaning it down, there's always going to be like odd spots here and there where you know it might peek through. So definitely go through and redo the borders in, in a black spray. Only takes a couple of hours to set and it's, it's worth doing it. And in this case, like here, it was, it was definitely worth doing it. We even had some, I think, on the front coin box area where it peeked through a little bit that I hadn't noticed. Um, you can see in the background the uh, the cabinet art there done the same thing, you know, sprayed around the edges just to create that border. And what Mark's doing there, as I mentioned in here, is he's trimming back so that it doesn't meet the edge. Because I had this problem with, like, Alien from Pim Pimble Brothers, which was a new machine. Um, they build the decals straight to the edge, and the problem with that is that it can fray and get caught by like you know watches, fingernails, like the belt buckle on your 
on your on your belt it could be anything and i feel like having that kind of like beveled edge just stops it from happening and it definitely looks better from my opinion anyway i much prefer it like every um vinyl decal artwork i do moving forward will have that beveled edge just to allow things to look better and here we're just using effectively um a, i think it was a a paint pot full of bolts some some just need some weight basically on the edge there to to clamp the decal down at one end and then slowly peel back and and apply the artwork we did actually have a couple of loose um bits of debris on the underside which i think were like bits of plastic from the um the wrap that goes uh that attaches to the sticker so there we had a bit of uh uh, how can I put it? a ten tender moment where we were, you know, carefully using a scalpel to remove them because we didn't want to leave these sort of bits of debris behind because they'll protrude through the artwork and make it look bubbly and and obviously nobody wants that. So yeah, here it's just effectively just finalising up the trimming artwork, getting everything all tidied up and cleaned up, and then here you guys will see a sneak peek of effectively what the artwork will end up looking like. I've slowed it down just so you guys can appreciate it a little bit and it will excuse the blurriness because obviously we'll, we'll do a proper video when everything's done and dusted and you guys can truly appreciate the finished work. But this really pretty much concludes part six of of the restore. Um, hopefully you guys find that a bit more interesting and uh, I'll see you on the next video.